If you love Target, you know how easy it is to go in for just one thing and then come out a hundred bucks later with a coffee in your hand and wonder what the heck just happened. There's actually a psychological explanation for what's going on. It's something called the Gruen Effect. It describes a store experience that's intentionally overwhelming, with lots of different sights, sounds, and smells. The effect is named after Austrian architect Victor Gruen. He spent his early life wandering the cafes and public squares of Vienna, Austria. When Gruen moved to America, he wanted to recreate that community atmosphere. And this fact kind of blew my mind. The Dayton Company, which would eventually become the Target Corporation, actually commissioned Gruen to build the very first indoor, climate-controlled shopping mall in 1952. But after construction, Gruen started to notice that customers seemed overwhelmed by all the sights, sounds, and smells of the mall. He also noticed that when you overwhelm customers with lots of stimulus, they forget what they came in for, they lose track of time, and they end up buying way more than they intended when they came in. Modern day targets also use the Gruen effect purposely or not. They have snack bars and Starbucks just inside the store. Targets are shiny and clean. They're full of vibrant colors and bright lights. All of this is designed to transform your mood and mindset. Right near the entrance, you'll see their discount section called Bullseye's Playground and the Dollar Spot. That whole section is designed to distract you right away with really cute, really cheap seasonal knickknacks. Do you need any of it? I need them. <laughs> no, but it's too late. You've already been sucked in by all the deals on cute Target stuff. Pretty soon you've got a full cart, a pumpkin spice latte, and your 20 minute quick trip is two hours and counting. Target doesn't just have fans, it has a cult following. Even celebrities like Beyonce, supermodel Heidi Klum, and even Al Pacino love Target. And that didn't happen by accident. Target has mastered a mix of aspirational design and affordable prices that give it a little something that the Walmarts of the world can't really duplicate. Target calls this strategy design for the masses, and it's an important part of their success. Basically, it works like this. A well-known designer like Isaac Mizrahi or a higher-end fashion brand like Victoria Beckham or Vineyard Vines partners with Target to create an exclusive collection that's only available for a limited time. Target builds big hype around the partnership, gets a lot of press and upscale publications like Vogue, and then uses scarcity tactics to make sure that people know that they might miss out if they don't buy the collab as soon as it's launched. So shoppers rush into the store to see what they can get their hands on, but even if the collection is all sold out, they'll still grab a few things while they're in the store. Not only do these partnerships give people a reason to visit the store, they also give Target design credentials that rub off on their brand and make it feel more upscale. The psychology behind this is something called the halo effect. It describes people's tendency to let one positive trait guide our total opinion of a person, a product, or an experience. For example, when you like and subscribe, it makes me think you're a wonderful person just because of that one nice thing that you did for me and for the channel, so you should probably do that now. And when Target partners with famous fashion designers to create more accessible versions of their products, Target themselves seem a little fancier. That's how they got the nickname Target, by borrowing some of the shine from more expensive brands with the halo effect. Target's slogan is expect more, pay less. This is where their Target reputation can work against them. If customers don't believe the pay less part, Target misses what makes them special. So they use three strategies to gamify shopping and always make you feel like you're getting a deal, even if sometimes you're not. First, the Target app has something called Circle, which are limited time deals that you have to add to your app. The deals change all the time, so you have to make sure you open the app every time you're in the store. That's Target using the psychological tactic of scarcity again. It says that when people know something is in limited supply, they want it even more. So as soon as you walk into Target, you're triggered to open the app and check the deals. Then once you're in Target, you'll notice that they use a lot of prices that end in 99. And that's not an accident. This is a psychological pricing strategy called odd even pricing. It describes the appeal of prices that end in odd numbers, like 99. Odd even pricing has been proven to increase demand for many types of products, but particularly lower priced items, which is good news for Target because that's mostly what they sell. After you found everything you were looking for, saved your coupons in the app, and hunted down some deals that end in 99 cents, Target has one more trick up its sleeve. They offer debit and credit cards called red cards, and if you use one, you save 5% off the top of your entire purchase, even sale items and ones you already use coupons on. So no matter what you pay, you always know you're going to save 5% more, and that's pretty persuasive. 